Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, represent, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about the whole topic of, of starting and running a small business and uh, how effective it can be and you know the complications that come along uh, in that whole process. And I've invited uh, two special people that are friends of mine that I've known for a long time uh, to come and talk about this. And first I'd like to uh, introduce Eliz Elizabeth Bracken Thompson. Liz, welcome. Great to be here. Thank right? you, Sandy. And Jeff Thompson. Absolutely. Welcome. Yeah, great. And uh, they're part of Thompson and Bender, um, which is a small business that that has just celebrated a little bit more than thirty years, right? Yep. It's hard to believe. Right. Time flies when you're having fun. It does. <laughs> and actually, uh, I believe it was, uh, and you do public relations, marketing, advertising, but you just uh, have received an award from the Westchester Magazine, uh, the Small Business of the Year Award, and uh, you must have felt really excited about that. It was really a special honor. Um, and, and we were so surprised and delighted, but really more so for the whole team at Thompson and Bender, all our employees, because we shared the award. Um, they had a nice reception. We invited all of our, our employees to the event and had them come up on the stage and accept the award on behalf of the whole company because it's a team mm -hmm, effort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's so many, I, I, I don't know whether you know, how many small businesses are there in Westchester? They have to be a lot and then many, you add Putnam thousands. and our whole state. Thousands. I mean, we really, you know, we think about these big corporations, but there are small businesses just everywhere. You oh, know, the, yeah, the economic engine. Absolutely. The small business community is far greater than, you know, we all think of MasterCard and PepsiCo and IBM, but right. the small business community is the backbone of the economy, really. Right. So the two of you, when I met you, heard about you, whatever, uh, a number of years ago, were working for the uh, Gannett chain. Uh, was it called the Gannett chain at that it, point? It was called the Westchester Rockland Newspapers. Right, and then it right. became the Gannett Suburban Newspapers, papers. and then it became <laughs> the Gannett Papers. And, and the Journal but, News. And then the Journal News. It, the, the irony was, when I started and when I actually met you, I was working for the Ossining Citizen Register. Oh my goodness, was, it was that and, long uh, ago. And Steve and wow. you were very active in the local village politics at that right. point, and then you moved on to greater heights. But uh, that's when I first met you guys, and the irony was, when the Journal News decided to have one name, just get rid of all those local ones like mm -hmm, the Citizen mm -hmm. Register, they hired us to come in and help them introduce it and brand it to the community. I finally said I made some real money off them. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> mean after, after you after started your own business? Oh, that's so I funny. left in 86. Right. What were you doing, Jeff? Were you doing um, business, the business part of yeah, it? Yeah, I started um, as a local reporter, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. If you can imagine, I had Briarcliff Manor as a full-time beat. Oh my goodness, we probably knew a lot about Briarcliff Manor during that period of time, and we probably don't know very much at all yeah, when you read the we paper We still don't now. know whose kids got arrested. I remember <laughs> you could never get that out of the police department. Uh -huh. yeah. but, but, uh, but, and there are so many ironies. I mean, the fact that now our business, Thompson & Bender, is based in Briarcliff Manor. Right. So there's all these serendipitous connections between but, them. Um, yeah, and then the last, I stayed with them for 17 years with the newspaper mm -hmm, group, mm -hmm. and uh, the last 10 I was there, I was the business and real estate news editor. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that, in a way, formed a basis for our business right. because I got to know a lot of people in the business community right. and uh, I saw a, a, an opening there where there wasn't really it's a very strong how, PR right, company. Right. Your, your career path can change, but you use, use what you learned in, in that area. Yeah, my mother burst that. into tears when I announced I was leaving the newspaper because she said, how could you leave a big, secure job like that with a big company with all those benefits? And uh, I said, look, if I was going to open a Mexican restaurant, you should burst into tears. But <laughs> I'm doing something that's basically an extension of what I've been doing. Did she cry for a number of years until you reached success? <laughs> no, she, but she did like getting those clippings that people would send her of my articles. She didn't get those anymore. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, right. Uh, yeah. And, right. And we actually, we actually met at the newspaper. Um, I was on the marketing side. I did not do news reporting. And um, 
I, I started there and worked there 15 years and then um, became vice president of marketing for the entire group. And at that time, they had 1,500 employees, as you know, right, covering right. Westchester and Rockland counties. And then uh, I, after Jeff formed the business, um, I joined in 1990 and uh, have been with him ever since. And I sort of brought mm -hmm. the advertising, marketing side. He brought more of the PR journalism side. Mm -hmm. And then you have Dean Bender, yes, who is your other partner. And he was also at the paper. Dean and I uh, worked, he was my right-hand person. We were the, he was the assistant business news editor. And so mm -hmm. we ended, we had a pretty big staff. We had 14 people on the staff at that time. And uh, so, yeah, I've said it, that's my second marriage, is to Dean. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been working with him for really, for, for 40 years. Wow. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I can say we've never had a fight. Right, so that's, that's amazing. So you've had, um, 30 years since, okay, so you, so you leave the paper. Um, were you nervous? I mean, your mom was nervous, but were you nervous about uh, what you could accomplish? No, I really wasn't. Um, we had n no money, and uh, a friend of mine uh, who had gone into the PR business himself and had been a journalist before that, mm -hmm. I met with him to talk about uh, starting mm -hmm. the business, and I was thinking of leaving the newspaper, and he gave me a lot of pointers. Um, and. At the end of that conversation, he said, oh, by the way, I'm, he handed me a check for $10,000. And he said, I don't ever expect this to be paid back. He said, you don't have any money. You need to get this business going. I want it to succeed. Oh, my goodness. And uh, so I told the story a, at his, at his funeral. There. Yes, Victor Weingarten, if you remember him. Oh, that's, that's incredible. That's yeah. really great. So when you, um, so you, you opened up your business. It wasn't in Briarcliff at that point. No, we went you into one another? of those shared office suites. Uh -huh. you, That's a it, place it for a small perfect. business, right? And it, so we had a, the front, I called it the Hollywood set. We had a uh -huh. secretary named Sandy who would answer the phone, Thompson and Benda, and uh, uh -huh. it went on from there. So <laughs> we had a sort of a real office, the trappings of an office in the beginning, and we had office services, which now in this computer age, you don't even talk about a lot of that stuff anymore. But uh, that was in right off on 287 in White Plains, mm -hmm. diagonally across mm -hmm. from the newspaper. Then we moved to Pleasantville because we needed have our own space. We rented space mm -hmm. in Pleasantville for probably five years, six years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we had an opportunity from now the late Carolyn Dwyer, who was a real estate mm -hmm. broker in Briarcliff, who everybody knew. And I had written a, some stories with her in them, and she took a shine to me. And I saw the sign for this house at, when I was stopped at the traffic light where it comes up there on Pleasantville Road and it said for sale. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. called her and she said, it's perfect for you. You need a building like I have, an old house fixed up. And, so and it is an old house, a yellow house. 1890. Right. 1890? Yes. Oh, my goodness. What was it like inside? It, was, it had been an antique shop. <laughs> uh, an in antique. the end, it was an antique shop. And for about the first three years, we had people coming in looking for antiques. And, uh, oh, right. So they <laughs> still, right, and then right. it was a Weber and Tufts real estate office. And they're the ones that painted it yellow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and when we bought the house, um, we it needed to be repainted and I told the painter I want you to match this color and he said well it's colonial yellow it's not going to be that it's all dark and dirty now I said match the color this is Briarcliff you can't change anything <laughs> <laughs> so that was the beginning yeah. but you had Liz in marketing were you were you involved at that point when yes. they bought yes. the house oh okay. yes absolutely so. and we ha and we actually when we began we said there's so much room here we have a conference room we have all our nice offices, and now we have actually converted the third floor into our entire creative space. And over the 30 years, we were just bulging at the seams. You know, mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. we have so many uh, employees now. Well, we have now. 15 employees, mm -hmm. including the three partners. Right. And so. when you started out, you just had the two partners, probably. There were two of and us, and then, then we added a, a one person and right. two. And um, it suddenly you realize you have a lot of people that, whose mortgage you're responsible for in their right. car loans. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's, yeah, we have a great staff. Right. So let's, so what were the most difficult things during that 30 years? What, what were the, what did the economic downturn do for well, you? Well, let me, that, I, I'll tell you the yeah. first one. Right. We okay. had a lot of eggs in the real estate basket in the mid to late 80s. Mm -hmm. And one year after we went into business was the big, at that time was unprecedented, the 500 point drop in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it knocked the right. real estate industry on its ear. Right. And so I thought, boy, this is pretty nerve wracking. But we did have a diversified client base at that point. And 
that kept us going and a lot of other agencies that were very locked into the real estate industry went down. Right. They didn't survive. So that is a secret? Do you still, I mean, that, that yes. for you, you, the diversity yes. for the diversity a business is, the, is yep. really important. That, that's the key, I think. And I mean, I think that is the key to our success. And then our connections into the community. And looking back, I, I just had to give an a overview to a group of professional women who were starting their own businesses mm -hmm. and small businesses. And they were asking me, you know, uh, w what would be your greatest advice to us? And I, and I said to take risks. And I would say that to anybody who's starting their own business. If I look back on my career, it was the times that I took a real risk um, that I had the greatest, um, the greatest sense of reward. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and also, the thing that I, I missed b leaving a big corporation, I, I don't know if Jeff missed it as much as I did, I liked being part of a big organization. But one of the differences, and I would say this to your viewers thinking of starting a business, is that when you start your own business, Sandy, you control your own destiny. Mm -hmm. Many times you, when you work for a large corporation, you may be do, performing wonderfully well, but through circumstances beyond your control, mm -hmm. the company mm -hmm. goes through a downturn, makes decisions about downsizing, or, and you're caught in that. And at least when you manage your own business, yeah, there's a lot of risk, but at the end of the day, you control your own destiny. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot of personal rewards for anyone considering that. Right. And when we think back, just the newspaper industry changed so much after you left. Who would have thought? Mm -hmm. Right. Who, who would have thought? ever predicted that newspapers may disappear and it would be all online? I mean, that would mm -hmm. never who would have, have been predicted in our that we would handle the groundbreaking, which started with the demolition of the Journal News building, which was replaced by uh, Lifetime right. Fitness. Right. And oh I, that goodness. was a bittersweet moment to watch that. You must have had a, like almost tears in we your did. eyes. Yeah, yeah it really, really was. Did. It was sad for for more than one reason. Personally, it was a little sad, obviously, for nostalgic reasons. But it was symbolic of what's happened to the media market mm -hmm. and certainly the traditional media market to see that building, which was built to, that that had opened in nineteen in the early 1970s, it wasn't, well, it's ancient by a lot of people's standards, but it wasn't by mine. And it would still look like a modern building. The right. whole plant and everything all just be demolished. And, um, and, and, you know, and to your point, Jeff, and I think this is another message for anyone considering a small <coughs> business and sustaining it over time is that you need to continue to stay current. Yeah. And you can't mm -hmm. stick in the past of the way you ran things. And as Jeff mentioned, the media world has turned. And we've continued, I think, some of our success at Thompson & Benders because we've continued to adapt, to be nimble, to change quickly mm -hmm. with the evolving mm -hmm. times. Right. So you're doing you know, public relations, marketing, advertising, all of that. A lot and, of social media work. And social media. So when you started out, it was an industry that looked like what in your first few years? Well, when we started years? out, there, was, there wasn't even a News 12. I mean, there right. was basically you had the Journal News and its various local editions, and you had um, the Times, which at that time had the Westchester section, yeah, which was right. really right. a very robust section right. with good coverage of Westchester County. If you, it's hard right. to imagine they even did it, but they did. And uh, th and you had the, the weeklies, the lo and that's mm -hmm, what we mm -hmm. dealt with was print journalists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, we really um, didn't have the only television we really had were the New York City networks. Yeah, the I New York suppose. City networks, right. and you had the, the the fledgling cable TV systems, and you, there was the local access programs almost from the start of cable TV, um, but. Uh, you remember the McLean system? I mean, yes. all these oh, yeah. systems mm -hmm. that finally really emerged as either FiOS or or, uh, or uh, Verizon. I was the point. early news <laughs> 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 yeah. community in about 19, when I became a county legislator, I think. I knew Roger McLean, so in 1982, he had me doing community programming, and because there wasn't any. And yeah. so needed to build that up, So so really, not much was happening. And then, um, I guess we were, I remember, you know, we, we relied on faxes, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there were typewriters a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, we started <laughs> exactly. with, with selectric typewriters when we went right. into business. And then we and quickly, quickly got into computer terminals. Could mm -hmm. they had been mm -hmm. introduced at the newspaper. Actually, the Gannett Early? newspapers yeah. here 
was one of the first newsrooms in the United States to have a computerized newsroom. Yeah. Mm. And there was a guy named Joe Angaro, who was the executive yes, editor. Yes, remember, remember right. He's now deceased, right. who really led that. And he was, he was on the absolute cutting edge of the uh, change of the newsroom into an mm -hmm, electronic mm -hmm. newsroom. And then at Thompson and Bender, when we started, um, we actually were one of the first um, businesses to actually create our own website. And um, oh. I remember when we celebrated our fifth anniversary, we sent out a little premium to all of our customers and clients, and it was a mouse pad. And people were saying, what is this? I mean, it's hard I to believe. I think I remember you getting, getting your mouse, mouse pad. pad. Right, and nobody knew what the mouse they were pad like, what was is this for, for particularly. Yeah, right. You, you can't thought you it. set a mouse trap on the mouse right. pad. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, now, today, we're completely digital. It's uh -huh. all about communicating through digital marketing and social media. And you know yourself, engaging mm -hmm. with people. For, uh, it's not about pitching stories to earned media anymore. It's about supplying content online and search engine optimization, search engine marketing. So it's, it's just completely radically changed. Mm -hmm. We also cut out a, a niche. Our niche and the, the common denominator of our clients is they have some direct stake in the Westchester, Fairfield, Putnam, Rockland market. And we're, we're the experts in that market and, um, and we do it well and that's... But that you didn't start out with that, did you? You started out with the Westchester market only? Ju only Westchester. Only Westchester and, we, and then it's yeah, just but building. Now we, are, we do some in the peripheral counties Hudson, around right. Westchester as well. Hudson, and it, it's right. a, bit in, it, a little bit in the Bronx because we represent mm -hmm. Simone Development, which is a major and, property mm -hmm. owner down there. And the Archdiocese of the City of New York, their education department, we do all their advertising, their website design, mm -hmm. um, and uh, all their all their search and social and but one of the things I think that Jeff just mentioned that's key is the connection to the community and one of our philosophies has always been you know it's not just about taking it's about connecting and giving back to the community mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well so we've not just taken money from our clients we've actually you know donated back we really right. believe in giving back right well you're you're both just there on so many different boards um, you know, Liz, I know you were you worked with the uh, Westchester Parks Foundation, which I think before was you said Friends of Parks uh, for a number of years. Um, you were working on the Bicycle Sundays. Did you get the Bicycle Sundays back again yes. when they were? We had them. It was always about money. It was always yep. about money, right? <laughs> right, right. It was always about money, and then uh, the the county couldn't fund it any longer. They always looked for, mm -hmm. you know. I remember years ago, Entman's Cakes was a no, was, it was a Fry funder. Hoffer. Fry Hoffers, mm -hmm. you know, underwrote the Bicycle Sundays. Then the, the the county couldn't sustain it, and it was such a popular event, mm, closing down absolutely. the Bronx River absolutely. Parkway, and. So the Friends of Park stepped up. We formed this group, a full nonprofit organization. I was lucky enough to be there in the founding years of it and chaired it for six years. And we now sustain Bicycle Sunday. Um, we supply all the monies to support it and do mm -hmm. programs throughout all the Westchester County parks. Right. Yeah. So when you say giving back, because I know you've had some business with government, yeah. uh, county government, so that was a way to give back exactly. uh, to county government. And, uh, you know, I, I know Jeff, you, well, you live around the T-Town area, T-Town yeah. Lake Reservation, which is a wonderful place. And it keeps growing, just like your business does. <laughs> 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 more land and more programming and everything else. And you, you were president a uh, for board a chair. chair for a number, a number of years. 13 that. years right. in two different terms. Jeff the first and Jeff the second. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you change what you were doing when you were Jeff the second? <laughs> when I became Jeff the second, well, it, it, it's funny, I, I hate to say it, but it, both of them occurred when a Swope family member passed away when I was president and I got thrust uh -huh. into the role. The first time I was only 26 years old. Oh my goodness. And that was also when Brooklyn Botanic Garden said they were going to take over T-Town and not let it be independent. Right. So suddenly, <laughs> there I am as a 26 year old guy facing that issue. But uh, anyway, T-Town's very robust now. Right. It's a wonderful organization. And you rose to the occasion on that one. I did. And it was my master's degree. <laughs> right. <laughs> it really was. I learned, how to, I, never, I learned how to run a board, how to be on a board, right. how, how it operated, how right. an organization operated. It and, and the networks that you've developed through your activities, uh, 
is important for the business too. Oh, well, there's right? no question about it, Cindy. I mean, I was, um, uh, I unfortunately experienced some heart issues myself personally, and I was approached by the American Heart Association and Westchester mm -hmm. Division to fund, um, and found rather, a, um, a Go Red for Women luncheon. Mm -hmm. And I was the founding chairman of the first Go Red luncheon and then did it for a second year and made so many connections through the healthcare community that we mm -hmm. ended up really specializing in healthcare from a PR advertising perspective. So to your point, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean there are there are def definite connections and uh, the Food Bank for Westchester which is the major group that supplies most of all the food to all the shelters in Westchester County and food programs. Um, you know, we started doing pro bono work and now we're working with them as uh, a client. So, mm -hmm. and, and the same with Arts Westchester, there's just so many fabulous organizations in Westchester County right. that do such great work and, and help us connect from a mm -hmm. business perspective mm -hmm. as well. So you would recommend to somebody who's, who has a business, don't just sit with your business, like sit in your yellow house <laughs> in Briarcliff. No, that you should, you need to reach out yeah, um, obviously, in different, most businesses, in different most businesses. businesses have different needs and different activities. Mm -hmm. Ours, we haven't figured out yet, and I don't think we're going to, how we can spend um, three months in Florida <laughs> calling it in. Um, oh. You know, it, I don't it, think you're going to get to Florida. No, no. it's it's well, it's, you have your cider mill. You can't. Yeah. Do that. Anyway, <laughs> okay. I do have the cider mill. That really keeps me in trouble. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, uh, it it we we have to be out. It's still a very personal contact business, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. interesting. Both of us grew up in Westchester, Liz in mm -hmm. Eastchester, and I grew up in Croton, and um, we're very much a part of the fabric of the community. I mm -hmm, we know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say we know everybody, but we certainly know a, a large proportion a of people, portion, and it's right. uh, it's a, it's a it's a it's a great place. The Hudson Valley is a great place. It's mm -hmm. to me, it's a it's easy place. to promote, isn't it? Oh. It's it is. Just right. a gem. It's such a right. special, special place. I mean, we do have the cider mill um, on our property, and this is a fascinating story. Just last weekend, um, and we're open every weekend. Jeff makes the cider, and we sell apples and hard cider, and um, we love it. But last weekend, a, a young couple walked into the cider mill on mm -hmm. Saturday, and they had been riding their bicycles, and you start conversations with them. They had they rode their bicycles from Brooklyn to Croton. Oh my goodness! And, wow! And and then they took their bicycles. They said they were taking the train yeah, from Croton to Croton Harmon Station, Station and taking the right. train back downtown. Right. Right. And we found out that um, that so many people from New York City are coming to Westchester right. County, you know, either by the train or, you know, renting zip cars and right, it's just which it's is just great. incredible. So Jeff, do you have a, a new? Um, client for your cider mill that's going to be back again on, on bicycles or I, is that a one shot do you think? <laughs> it's interesting you do there is in, in October there are there's a tourist element to it um, right. people that find it by chance that used to be fairly common now it's they go online mm -hmm. and they find what, things that are close to New York and uh, I told my daughter who lives out in Boulder Colorado about this story mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. said oh yeah people had ride from Boulder to Denver all the time. I mean, it's, right. she didn't see it as a big deal at all that they had ridden from Brooklyn. I said, no, <laughs> you try riding on the BQE on a bike. <laughs> Jeff, I'm just thinking, you have another small business then. You yeah. are a double business person. Yes. Um, I have the cider mill that I started on my own when I was much younger. That, that actually goes back, uh, it's almost embarrassing to say, 40 years. Did you go plant apple trees? What, what did I, you do to start this all out? Um, I bought an old uh, thing that had been orchard since the 1880s, and it had been abandoned in the 1930s. It's adjacent, immediately adjacent to the Teton Lake Reservation property. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, I've re replanted the orchard, so it's now over 500 trees. We have a cider mill there. It's a boutique business. It's not a mm -hmm. large-scale mm -hmm. business. But I do have a following, a very, very loyal mm -hmm. following. It's now I have third-generation people, third-generation families That's that are incredible. coming there. It's, I, I, they're the nicest darn people you'll ever run into. Right. It sounds corny. You're still doing pies, right? Yep. Well, right. Uh, we uh, don't bake the that? pies. We, um, we acquire the pies. You acquire the yeah, pies. Yeah, um, okay. Stewart's uh, Orchard Bakery, we deal a lot with them. And uh, oh, okay. so we have a good, I have relationships over the years with virtually every orchard around. 
Yeah. All right. But one of the things you've been really involved with, Sandy, as um, someone in Albany, is the, the great way that you and, and the governor have really promoted cideries. And yes. mm -hmm. so as a result Absolutely. of that, we've been able to introduce this year our first hard cider. Mm -hmm. And it's really mm -hmm. due to all the great legislation to encourage farm to table in the Hudson Valley right. and we're beneficiaries of right. that. Right. We're, we're just creating a new age. I think we spoke before the program about prohibition um, and some of our laws I yeah. think Jeff was saying. The laws yeah, the that laws. the SLA, right. the, the, I just heard the, uh, the, the chairman of it say a week ago at a conference that the laws w were basically written in, in mm -hmm. the early 1930s that are governing, governing a 2017 economy and it, it, they, but they are really making major major strides major changes right. I, I do give governor cuomo enormous credit for what he's done for the farm well uh, that's really helped new business new oh, businesses absolutely. start up you know it's, it's a incredible wonderful incredible what's going right. on in new york state now there's so right. many new businesses. cideries wineries Craft beers. Uh, breweries um distilleries right uh it's it's phenomenal it's great so this is the 30th year um, you have parties a lot every year. So what's going to happen in the next five years? Are we going to have a party at the end? or Now, what, what are some of the things that you think you might be working on in the next five years or any changes you think might occur that might, you may not know what's coming well, ahead? I, I, certainly in, the, in dealing, the media market is continuing to change. It's evolving. I don't believe there's a soul in the United States or maybe the world that knows where it's going to evolve to because we've kind mm -hmm. of taken away a lot of the traditional news sources and not sure what we've exactly replaced them with. So there's a, that's a problem, a societal mm -hmm. issue that we confront. So, but it confronts our business as well. So we're doing right. a lot more with sponsored content and we'll just keep watching it and try to Try get to be on ahead the, of the curve. Try to get ahead of the curve, absolutely. As you said, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. be ahead. Just right. be ahead and it continue to evolve and change and embrace the change and, and take advantage of it and see opportunities and, mm -hmm. and just embrace them for anyone considering mm -hmm. a small mm -hmm. business. And I just want to say, Sandy, that as a woman, I think it's a great time for women, too. Mm -hmm. And there mm -hmm. is so much opportunity out there for women to start their own business and be creative, no matter what stage of life you're at. Right. That's a very good message. And I know you've gotten honors for being a, a woman in business. I, I don't know. They might have I forgotten heard, Jeff. I passed but over as a man <laughs> in business. <laughs> it's the way it is, Jeff. Anyway, I want to thank you both for being here today and to talk about uh, things that you have done over your 30 years um, in, in your business and many years before that. But uh, And hopefully you've inspired some other people to do just what you've done and follow in your footsteps. So um, I want to thank you so much. And uh, if anybody has any questions at all, I assume that they can contact uh, Thompson and Bender and find out, um, you know, get some ass aid or assistance or back to what you said, Jeff, before a, a mentor. Yeah. Um, so I thank you both. And if you have any questions at all, please just give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice evening. Thanks.